guys, welcome back into the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be covering ages within scouting in MLB The Show 23, something I've specifically been asked about many times in the comment sections this year, and something that I think is extremely important for us to take a look at whenever we're actually scouting players. There are so many other factors that you're going to want to consider when you are scouting in MLB The Show 23, but I want to specifically focus on age today and draft younger players and why it's important to focus on those younger players. So my previous videos on scouting in MLB The Show 23 focused on other areas of scouting but did not emphasize heavily the age of the players that you're actually scouting. And that is something that I want to incorporate into my overall set of videos on scouting in the new system because it's going to be pretty important that you guys actually draft younger players. It's not going to necessarily be as important at the top end of the draft because if you're getting some of these players that have that A and B potential that you're really looking for, but they're a 22 year old, it's going to be a big difference if they're a lower overall versus a higher overall. So you kind of have to consider how development is actually going to work for you within MLB The Show, which I have multiple other videos on, but we're going to briefly outline different points of that as we go through. And so just to kind of detail some of that and what I'm talking about in terms of development is you can generally expect somewhere in the range of three to four overall increases from a player that has B potential in the 80s on a year-to-year -year basis. It can be a little bit more than that if they play well, and it can be less than that if they actually play poorly, but nonetheless, you can get a pretty much automatic couple of overall point increases from those B potential players. A potential players are more than that, four to five points pretty much guaranteed going from year to year, and oftentimes it's more than that because A development players, those guys in the 90s for their potential, go up pretty quickly. So you have to consider that whenever you consider a player's age and their overall. So if we're talking about a 22 year old, for example, right now I'm scrolling over Jack Nettles, this starting pitching prospect, he's coming in at that 80 to 99 potential, which is fantastic. That means that we pretty much know that he's going to be an A or B potential player. The only thing to consider here then is that he's a 22 year old player. So we're gonna want him to come in at a higher overall because if you draft a 22 year old player, they're already sacrificing years of development. Take it this way. If you're drafting two players that have the same potential range between 80 and 99 and a similar overall range, let's say they're both going to come in in the 50s or 60s, are you going to want the 22-year-old player or the 18-year-old player? I think pretty much everybody would answer that they want the 18-year-old player because within the show, that's four extra years of development that that player is going to have. And by the time they get to that 22 age player, so for example, at 22, this guy might be a 65 but let's say I draft somebody that's 18 years old we know that he's going to be 10 15 maybe more overall points better by the time he hits 22 and so he's going to have similar potential but then in four years he's going to be a 75 or 85 overall player if he came in at 18 years old so there is a big difference and I don't want to understate that difference within MLB the show's scouting system and I think that it's something that might have gotten a little bit lost in some of the other videos, some people kind of thought that I was just overlooking age as a scouting factor. It's just not something I made a video on yet, and I haven't combined all the factors together to make a video on it either. But we really have to take a look at players' ages. And this is really, really important as you get lower into the rounds in your draft. So when you're up here near the top of the draft, you're looking at players that are going to be coming in with overalls in the 70s, 60s, and 70s for the most part. I mean, we look at some of these top players and their overall projection is upward is some of them even into the 80s so there's the potential that even if some of these players are older like you can see the top overall projected player right now is 21 years old there's the potential that these guys are going to be coming in at a higher overall and much more serviceable to begin with and so the difference between them and a younger player is not going to be that significant but it can still be pretty significant a great example is the difference between this starting pitcher charles venable who is a potential 59 to 78 overall with that high development and then we take a look at just somebody that's two years younger than him look at his 
potential range, 75 to 99. So very much relatively the same potential range and very much still the same overall range at 55 to 79. Now, once we get more into scouting these players, we'll know for sure what those numbers are going to be coming out to. But generally speaking, if I was comparing between these two players, if I didn't care what position they were at, I would probably go with Sean Robles just based on the information that we have right now, because I know that he's two years younger. And if they're coming out at the same overall with relatively the same potential, by the time Sean Robles is 21 years old, like Venable, he's going to be a higher overall than Venable, who's coming in as a 21 year old. Now, of course, that's not considering the fact that Venable is also going to go up in that two year time frame, but it just means that this guy might be more valuable. And if you don't need the just flat out higher overall player, then it's better to take the younger guy because overall throughout their career, they have a higher chance of becoming a higher overall at a younger age and giving you more more as a player throughout their career. So hopefully what I'm saying there is kind of making sense to you guys. It's just generally going to be better to get the younger player if you have the potential to do so. And so when it comes to the scouting system, there is actually something to be said for the various different scouting methods. I know we've talked about scouting by position, especially with starting pitchers, and we've talked about scouting specific individual players. There is something to be said about only scouting 18 and 19 year old players. If you can find enough of them that are like Sean Robles, for example, that have 75 to 99 potential, then those are the players that you should be targeting. And I highly recommend that as you go through the scouting system, you pretty much target those guys with good potential and low age first as a combination. So combine the two strategies that we've now talked about, which is targeting those specific players that have the potential that you want or the potential overall range that you want and combine that with targeting the younger players in those groups. So you're probably still going to end up scouting some 21, 22 year old players. But when it comes down to it and we get towards the end of the draft and we're looking at players that are you know potentially a 21 22 year old I don't know how much value they're really going to provide to you. So hopping over to my Pirates franchise real quick, where I already have a draft class ready to go, I want to take a look at a few of the prospects that I have drafted and we do have information on. We're taking a look at some of these players that are a little bit older, but I generally tried to focus on drafting younger players in this draft class. Nonetheless, though, I was able to get a couple of A potential guys. One guy that you might just off the bat, based on my previous videos, assume is going to be good for your organization is Ryan. And harder a starting pitcher that has 90 potential that a potential is fantastic i definitely want to see that the only problem is that for a lower overall player he's 21 years old so he's a 57 overall let's do a little bit of math on that let's assume that just on an average level we're getting four points of overall progression per year out of this player and we want him to be in the mid to high 70s for him to be serviceable on our roster at those numbers we're gonna say it's gonna take about five five years for this to become a truly serviceable player five years four points per year that's 20 development points so in about five years this guy's going to be a 77 overall roughly speaking without any other factors being considered into that that's going to put this player at 26 years old now that's not bad all things considered for this player that's not terrible to have a 26 year old that's a 77 overall ready to break into the majors not the end of the world for you at all but imagine if this guy was 22 year olds then you're looking at a player that's maybe 27 maybe you're looking at a player that's almost 28 before they break into the majors if this guy's even potentially a little bit lower overall nonetheless they're still going to be helpful to your organization if they have that high potential but compare that to a guy that's going to be younger if we compare that to Patrick Marks, for example, who's an 18-year-old 57 overall, and we consider the same exact factors, it's going to take about 20 development points for him to be effective. It's going to take about five years. We're now talking about a 23-year-old player starting at our major league level and making a big-time impact. That's actually a pretty huge difference, all things considered, and something that you definitely should be on the lookout for, because that player's value is going to be 
be significantly different than that guy that's 21 years old. And again, that's why this player was a first overall or first round draft pick, because that value is there. I know that this guy, especially based on some of his individual ratings, is going to be a stud within a handful of years. And in addition to that, we also have to consider B potential players. You might get an 18 year old B potential or C potential player that has a little bit more value than a 22 year old A or B potential player that's like a 40 or 50 overall player at the end of the draft. Now I drafted this guy, William Wright at the end of the draft, who's a B potential guy, but he's 18 years old and a 41 overall. This may or may not have value to my organization in the long run. You have to consider how long it's going to take before this guy's actually serviceable. We're talking somewhere around 30 to 35 development points at the least. And so for a B potential player, that's going to be like 9 to 10 years before this guy is really going to make an impact. So this guy is going to be in his late 20s before he's making an impact. And for our organization, it's going to take a long time, no matter what, for him to get up and and make that impact that we might want him to make at the major league level and so really at the end of the draft this guy might just end up being a little bit more of a trade piece nonetheless though drafting that 18 year old player at least gives me the shot for this guy to make it eventually to our team if this guy was 22 years old he would have no hope of ever really making it to our major league roster even if he was a b potential player if you consider that guy being a 22 year old he's going to be a 30 plus year old player before he ever has a chance to break into the majors or compete in any significant way so Again, that's not considering any other factors, but I do want you guys to know, and I wanted to address some of those comments, that I don't overlook age, and I want you guys to know that you should certainly be looking at the younger players if possible. And the other thing to consider here is with the new scouting system, because of the way they have the generational prospect system working, you're only going to get those generational prospects in the 18-year-old age range. Now, you're still going to be able to get really good prospects as 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. That don't get me wrong there, but technically a generational prospect is going to be an 18 year old player that has that 99 potential. So with all that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video or found it informative. If you did enjoy this discussion topic, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you have a good one.